Hi Luxury Home Show, my name's Rebecca Louise. I'm an influencer and a single mother of three. Welcome to my home. So welcome inside. This is my entrance hall. I absolutely loved this when I first viewed the house and it was a huge selling point for me. The house was built in the 1950s and it actually started as just the centre part of the building and they added on the left wing and the right wing so it's all, I think it's doubled in size if not more since it was built. So we have 58 windows and doors in total which is huge and a real pain actually when you're locking up at night time but the light that floods in is incredible so it just feels like a really happy house because of that so I absolutely loved the film Father the Bride and I loved it as I was growing older and um, I loved the format that they had in the house where as you enter you've got double doors on the right double doors on the left I just love the flow of that so as soon as I entered this house it reminded me of the Father of the Bride house which I love so you'll notice that every door frame that enters into one of the main living spaces actually has double doors, which is incredible. And it all adds to the light as well, which is amazing. When we moved in, it was completely bare. There was absolutely nothing, no flooring, no wall decor, no light fixtures, anything. It was a complete shell. And I knew that I wanted to do something spectacular with this space. This uh, chandelier is three and a half meters drop and one meter diameter. And I designed it, it was originally a wide chandelier but I asked the manufacturers if they could make me a long drop and swap it around and they did that and it has come out better than what I probably could have imagined and we've also had a double bespoke chandelier made in a much much tinier version for the gallery landing. Both chandeliers are from Lightstyle, which is a lovely company, it's quite local. And lastly in here, the panelling. So that this was not here when we first moved in, but I am obsessed with panelling and the intricacy that it brings to a house and the detail. So I used a company called South Creek Projects, who are fantastic, and they have put panelling in throughout because once they've done one space, of course, you needed to do all of the spaces. It was a huge job but so worth it. This is the cloakroom, also a huge selling point for me. It was empty when we moved in actually, it was just a shell of a room, but I had these um, fitted units put in. Reason being, I've got three children who are incredibly messy. So um, I like to have things hidden. I, you'll probably notice as we go around, I'm a little bit OCD when it comes to um, what's on show. The boys have their own, this is my seven year olds cupboard and my nine-year-old's cupboard so they have their own cupboards and all of their shoes organized and I give them a little treat a little sweet if they get home from school and they manage to pop them in there and not chuck them on the floor as soon as they get home sometimes they do sometimes they don't <laughs> <laughs> so next to the cloakroom I've got the study which I'll show you later and then the formal living room but let me take you through to the kitchen this is my most asked about room on my Instagram account it's 12 meters long by six and a half meters wide. So it's a pretty big size. And the kitchen makers are Davenport. So they supply this beautiful kitchen and it was actually fitted before I move in. So when I was in the process of buying the house, but it was gray. So as you can see, they've completely repainted the whole thing for me. If you go onto my Instagram page, you can see what it looked like before. So the island is actually three meters wide by two meters deep, and it's got some beautiful cabinetry on this side, seating for four on that side. So that's myself and the three boys. Obviously had to go for leather upholstery because the boys are really messy, basically. Um, so everything has to be wipeable in this house. Panelling continued into this room, which made a huge, huge difference. And it just softened everything really. And it really pulls out the fact that this is a period home and it does have beautiful features, as you'll see as we walk through the house. There's a lovely little surprise behind these doors that display just how OCD I am. So when I first moved into the house, this was just shelving no lighting, no mottled mirror, but Davenport came and fitted these detailing for me and it's completely transformed the cupboard. I was toying with the idea of it being a bar, but actually it's just not practical. I have three children who eat a lot, but it works so well and it's probably the most used cupboard in the entire house. The boys now are old enough to make their own cereal, so they grab a jar and then do that for themselves. 
So now into the seating area of the kitchen. This is also quite a big space. Originally it was actually designed by the architect. He intended it for a dining space here and then the back end for a seating area. But I know that I'm more inclined to have people ground for more of a casual environment. And we have the dining room already, so we didn't need it. So I marked off the space with this bespoke made carpet and then filled it with the furniture. So the previous sofas were very, very formal. They were in a three part format, but I added this chandelier just to give a focal point to the space and then worked around these corner sofas, children snuggling on each of the corners. The TV's always on, especially in the evenings. It's lovely and we can just relax in here, but in a pretty aesthetic as opposed to the snug that we also have. In the back end of the kitchen, the ceilings actually increase by two feet. It allows for an extra layer of windows on top of the bifolds at the back, and that just allows lots more light to flood in. Hey, I hope you've been enjoying the tour so far, but I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. We've actually been recording the behind the scenes to this video all day long. We're gonna record all the behind the scenes for future tours and release full episodes. Now, this is something that you can only get exclusive access to if you sign up to be a member. So if you wanna access this and even more exclusive content, hit the join button that's right next to subscribe and you can be a member of the Luxury Home Show. Now, back to Rebecca. So next is the dining room. Got a huge 1.8 meter diameter wooden bespoke made table in here. I drew it and then asked the local carpenter to make it up. And they did, they did a great job actually. It's a really, really beautiful table. Wipeable chairs obviously are a must with the children. Uh, they're from my furniture and they're absolutely gorgeous. So they were changed recently when the kitchen scheme color changed from gray to ivory. I didn't really fully think about the scale of the change that was going to happen just by changing the kitchen. But obviously this is a room off of the kitchen so the grey that used to be here suddenly didn't work anymore so we changed them all out for ivory this is a real talking point as well for people this is the lighting company now it's part of the cristalia range but i believe they don't sell that anymore but they have a very similar option this is a meter diameter so it's absolutely huge i'll show you a little hidden gem now of the house which a lot of the mums get excited about not so much the dads. <laughs> this is the utility room, huge selling point for me. One of the um, things on my tick list was to have a massive utility room. Another very popular feature on my Instagram page is the fact that I have two washers and two dryers in this room. And I have to say it is very, very useful. Also in this room, we have a double sink and loads of surface space. Originally, this was designed by a family, I think they had two or three dogs, so it was originally going to be a room that also had some dog grooming um, facilities in it. Pull out tap when they were going to wash their dogs. I don't have dogs, so I have used it more as a boot room utility. Next to the utility, I have got a downstairs WC. Very basic and boring, so there's no point in showing you that at the moment. And then we come into the playroom. So this is a room that the children will run to first after school with the TV, with all of the toys out, looking very different to this. <laughs> the storage was really important in here, obviously, because you don't want toys lying around. You can see this room from the formal dining room. So it wasn't a room that could be messy all of the time and toys left out. So these storage units have proven to be extremely important. We're not gonna open those because not pretty. <laughs> so out from the playroom, we go through the entrance hall and enter into one of my favorite rooms, which is the formal living room, but we actually call it the white room. So the living room is one of the most feminine rooms I've got in the, in the house. Um, the color scheme is very light. The shades of pinks in here, it just is very warm and welcoming and very pretty. The window bay is one of my favorite things in the entire house. I'm a complete sucker for window bays. I would have them in every room if I could. This is an original window bay from the 1950s. They've obviously put in new sash windows. 
um, and the panelling was an addition when I moved in. But it's a real magical space and I just adore sitting here. This is actually one of the few rooms in the house, it's the original part of the building. So the original house ended at that fireplace and then at the outside side of the dining room. Again, I've repeated symmetry in here, two sofas instead of one, and then behind me, the symmetry just works so well and it's really aesthetically pleasing, I think. These cabinets on either side of the fireplace are actually a real find. So when I was a bit younger, I guess a little bit strapped for cash, I used to shop in boot sales and I would try and find wooden furniture that I could upcycle. And these were, I think they were 25 pounds each. And I chucked them in the back of the car, brought them home, sanded them down and painted the bones silver. And I'm really reluctant to get rid of them because they're so beautiful. You're probably noticing a lot of my frames don't have artwork in. It's not laziness, it's because I have several different lists of things to do and the children and general surviving life bump to the top of the list. Things like this get shut down, so I'm working on it. <laughs> this is the home office and it was supposed to be a cinema room, but I'm a little bit adverse to home cinemas unless you have a space that isn't in the main part of the house. I just don't like the idea of having a pitch black room off of an entrance hall. So I changed the usage of this room into an office and it really suits me and my children actually because they have constant homework, I have constant admin and it doesn't feel like we're crammed into a tiny little room. The little one can watch TV while I'm doing homework with the bigger boys and we can just all sit in here and not feel too crammed in. So through here is the garage and then through the garage it takes you into the gym, but we'll go and see the gym for another side. So that's everything downstairs. Now I'll take you upstairs and show you the rest of the house. This is the gallery landing area, which I absolutely adore. You've got the full view onto the beautiful chandelier down into the entrance hall, and then all of the bedrooms flow off of this space, which is really nice. These sofas are from My Furniture, which I love, and they're really formal, but comfortable at the same time. They're beautiful color as well, and like a linen fabric. So they work really well with the modern country aesthetic that I have in the home. The paneling as well, I love the way that it just is quite striking behind the chandelier. And then we've got four huge windows looking out onto the front, which are really pretty. And this spot is the best spot in the house for sunset and the sky is just orange, orange pink at night and it's so pretty to sit up here and watch that. Okay, let me take you to the first room up here, which is the master bedroom, my bedroom. This room is a very well used bedroom, not just for me, but also for my three children. So that being said, um, I currently have a super king but I'm in the middle of purchasing a emperor size bed. I'm really looking forward to having an emperor bed because I've never had one before. So that should be really, really exciting, that delivery day. And then off of the main part of the bedroom, we've got the ensuite, which has double sinks. And it's a very large room and has a beautiful roll top bath. Well, it's not a roll top, it's a modern twist on a roll top bath. But everyone always asks me about this bath. I think it's just a bit more of a unique way to do a roll top. When I purchased this house, there weren't any fitted wardrobes included or they hadn't been put in at that point. So this was just an empty room. So I designed this space with a wardrobe makers. And of course it had to be symmetrical from the view from the bedroom into the walk-in wardrobe. Each of the units are the same size but I put different colours in each of the units, which always looks so much more striking than had they been mixed up. So I've got all of the clothing in their own section, but I've also got a dedicated section for shoes and bags. I obviously can't fit all of them here. Some of them are in different units, but my most special pieces, I suppose, are on display. I like to keep them all colour coordinated. As you can see, it's just easier to work out outfits that way. And this, was my first designer bag in my entire collection. So that's a pretty special piece for me. So when I design any wardrobe, I think 
think now I've done about 10. When they're open like this, I always think it's so important to have lots and lots of lighting. So as much as you can fit into a walk-in wardrobe because it just makes the colors pop, it lights up the items and it just looks so stunning and striking, particularly if the doors are open to that room. So let me show you some more bedrooms now. We're coming out onto the landing. Look at this view, how pretty is that? This is probably my favorite view of the chandelier from up high. You get the real impact of the light up here. Now into my two older boys' bedroom. When you come into this room, the first thing you're going to notice is the window. It's just incredible. So this room was actually intended for the master suite, but it got switched up actually when I was viewing the house and I suggested that the room with the balcony would be better for the master suite and that's actually what they ended up doing, they swapped, swapped it around. So I recently had these beds made for the boys. They were in their own bedrooms but it turns out that they don't want to stay in their own bedrooms so they end up in my bedroom. So I had a little idea that if I put them in together I've got more chance of them staying in bed all night. So I had these gorgeous beds made by Bedworld and upholstered in this beautiful textured fabric and they love it and it has worked and they do stay in their bedroom now, which is amazing. So all of the wooden furniture, the bedside tables and the toy chests were made by my father from scratch. So many people ask me where I got these boxes from, but obviously they're from my dad, so I can't give you a link to them. So the boys also have their own walk-in wardrobe, which is a really, really nice addition to this suite. They normally wear the same thing, so you'll see two of each item in most cases. They are still too short to actually reach the top bar, so I'm currently looking into the addition of a pole and a ladder. It's almost like a library um, ladder, and they're gonna be able to reach their clothes a lot more easily once that's been installed. So the boys also have their own ensuite, which is lovely and bright and airy. They've got a bathtub and they've got a double drenched shower, which is amazing. And just everything else that you'd need in an ensuite. So another cute little feature of this house is that we've got a laundry chute. The amount of washing that I would normally have to bring downstairs is huge. So this is a really handy little thing. Just chuck it down and it goes down into a basket so I can take it straight into the laundry room. This is quite controversial because this is actually my two-year-old's bedroom, which you're probably wondering why is there a king-size bed in a two-year-old's bedroom. There is a um, reason behind it. He has started climbing out of the cot that used to be in here, so it's just too dangerous to have him wandering around the landing. So what I've now done is put in a um, king-size bed and I fall asleep in here with him when he goes to bed and then I go into my room and he seems to want to stay in here all night. So it just works really, really well. So he has his own fitted wardrobes for whatever clothing he has. And then also um, an ensuite, which of course he never uses because he's two years old and he's still in nappies, but he will at some point start to use them. Um, it's just a lovely little ensuite, nice lighting behind the mirror and a drenched shower again. Okay, so on the other side of the house, down this long corridor, are two more guest bedrooms. It was really tricky actually to think of what to do down here because it's such a long corridor. I couldn't put any tables or anything in because it would make it too narrow. So I had the idea of putting multiple mirrors in and then a light above each mirror just to give light and reflection. And then the panelling was actually popped on after the mirrors had been hung. This is the first guest bedroom that I'll show you. And it's literally just been set up actually as a guest bedroom days ago. And we've got a Super King bed in here made by Bedworld, an absolutely incredible company. They supply to retailers on the high street, quite big retailers, but they've decided to now retail them themselves. And this was a bed that they made for me, a winged bed, and the detail in the structure is just incredible. It's a beautiful, beautiful high bed as well. Beautiful rug from the London Rug Company and a unit from Homery, which I have to say is one of the heaviest things I've ever had to lift up says ever. So this is a gorgeous piece of artwork from Mala Art and they sent it to me. It really finishes off this space. Then off of the guest bedroom, you have an open walk-in wardrobe. So again, lighting in here was big. My older son was obsessed with Avatar and 
after buying the whole collection, spending a lot of money on it, he now decides that he doesn't like Avatar anymore and we're on to a next theme. So that's why it's in the guest bedroom, not his bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the ensuite to the guest bedroom. Lots of people comment on these tiles. They absolutely love these tiles. I'm probably going to paint the walls, very unlike me, um, a midnight blue to correspond with the tiles. I just feel like it needs something else in this room. And then the next room is guest bedroom number two. This is a slightly darker palette in here, but I really love the mood that it creates. And um, we have fitted wardrobes as you come in. So I suppose it's a dressing area, but an enclosed one. And then another super king bed for all of my guests when they stay. Wallpaper in here is this gorgeous, gorgeous textured wallpaper from Art House. It looks like a really delicate snake skin. Lots of people ask me about this. They don't actually sell it anymore because I have researched it to see if I can find it, but unfortunately it can no longer be found. <laughs> and there's also an ensuite in this bedroom, which is a really generous size with bath and shower. So as mentioned before, there is a gym in the property and um, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous position. So the gym itself hasn't been decorated yet, so it's a work in progress, but it's got your basics in it. But the nicest feature is that all of the bifold doors fully open out onto the patio areas, onto the garden, which is a lovely, lovely thing to have when you're working out. The garden furniture, now these are particularly beautiful. They're from Royal Craft, and I've never seen anything quite like it. They're acacia wood with a rope woven detail, and the colors are perfect. They're just so unusual. The sun loungers, I've never seen anything of this style before, so they fit so, so well with the house and the color scheme and the modern country aesthetic that I always work towards. And the plantings really added a nice dimension to the garden. This has only recently been put in and obviously isn't established yet, but it runs the whole length of all of the patios. And once it's grown, we're gonna have lavenders and green, and it's just gonna look so pretty in the summer. So everything in the garden works off of a central point on either side of the window bay, there's symmetry. And that center point of the window bay, if you run up the garden, becomes the center point of the pool, the center point of the whole rest of the garden, which is lovely. So this terrace area is absolutely gorgeous to sit on in the morning because it's in full beam sun. Last year, we actually had four ginormous conifers at the back part of the garden. So all of this was in shade but they've all been taken out and the swimming pool has been put in its place. We haven't yet used the swimming pool because it was only put in in October last year. So we haven't actually had a summer season with the swimming pool yet. So that's something really nice to look forward to. And this table and chairs, a really unique set, concrete slab table with acacia wood and then more of the woven rope detail. Cannot wait to use that this summer. So the reason I had the four huge conifers removed was because the sun rises at the back of the garden and it sets behind the house so the first part of the garden actually becomes fully in shade at four o'clock and then the only part left in sun is the whole back of the garden so I knew the swimming pool had to be at the back and this lounge area and we've got patio heaters that are going to allow us to extend that time a little bit longer and all of the corner sofas all of my furniture currently in this garden is actually from Royal Craft it's part of the Roma range so it all matches so the garden itself is 0.5 acres and wraps all the way around the side of the house it's for a separate garden which I use for the children we're currently midway through the landscaping so you guys will have to come back and see um, the finished result. So there's a pergola going in, um, a patio area. The, the whole right-hand side of the house is gonna be patioed. Rosebank Landscaping did the initial design for the garden and did a great job, actually. They're fantastic at what they do. Um, and Concilium Hortus then came and filled out, based on the Rosebank Landscaping designs, filled out all of the flower beds with their soft landscaping, which they're currently in the middle of. So it's going to look so established and bloom very soon. So yeah, you'll have to come back and see 
the progress in a few months time because it's going to look very different to this. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the tour of my home. See you soon. Hi everyone, Tom here and welcome back to another episode of the Luxury Home Show. Today you're joining Jazz and myself in Hampstead, a community favoured by some of Britain's most famous faces. It has some of the most expensive real estate in the London area. Within its boundaries, there are more millionaires than any other area in the United Kingdom. 